Thank you, Mr Acting Speaker. When I usually write in this place, I often say that it is a pleasure. That is not the case this afternoon. It brings me no pleasure to present this petition to Parliament today because of the circumstances that deem it necessary. Alina Kaufman and Ernesto Salazar should be alive today. Alina should be joining our healthcare system as a registered nurse, helping to save lives. Ernesto should be at school right now. He would have just started year 11 at Cecil Hills High School. Ernesto wanted to be a social worker, helping some of our community's most vulnerable people. Instead, Alina and Ernesto's lives were stolen in a tragic and callous incident just metres from their home in Heckenberg on the 1st of September last year. Why were they taken? Because of the actions of someone who should not have been on the road at all. Alina did what siblings across our community do. Indeed, it's often something that I did as a young person. She offered to pick Ernesto up from his part-time job at Kmart. As they returned home, the car they were both travelling in was hit by someone allegedly travelling at 100 kilometres an hour in a 60 kilometre per hour zone. To add insult to injury, the police allege that the driver and other occupants of the vehicle left the scene without rendering assistance. They saw the carnage that they caused and their first instinct was to call on others to take them from the scene. They allegedly called on these people to assist in hiding their involvement. Alina and, Alina and Ernesto's mother, Angelina, who joins us in the gallery this afternoon, will never see her children grow up, embark on their careers, get married, or have kids of their own. It is an unbearable weight no parent should have to bear. Anyone who has experienced grief know that it, knows that it can be debilitating. It can be hard to find the means to go on and to find purpose. I imagine those who have lost their child feel that pain even more intensely. However, Angelina has not allowed grief to immobilise her. She and her incredible support network of family and friends have channeled grief into action. She wants justice for her children. And it is for that reason we are here this afternoon debating this petition. The petition before the House asks us to consider whether maximum penalties for such road offences exact justice for victims of serious road crimes. In the case of Alina and Ernesto, the alleged offence offender faces a maximum penalty of 14 years imprisonment. This is seven years less than the potential sentence that awaits those who try to cover up the crime. They face a maximum sentence of 21 years. The current state of the law in relation to such offences is varied and applied inconsistently. Recently, the driver in an incident which killed five teenagers in Buxton was charged with five counts of aggravated dangerous driving, occasioning death the same charges as the driver in this instance. If the maximum sentence were applied across all the lives taken in this tragedy, he, he should have received a sentence of 70 years. Instead, he was sentenced to just 12, with a non-parole period of just seven years. That is a sentence of 2.5 years imprisonment per life taken if the full sentence is applied and just 16 months otherwise. It therefore begs the question of what is fair and just? What is the value of a life? And what if remorse is not shown? Speaker, it is clear that change is needed. Angelina began this petition by asking for signatures at Liverpool Railway Station. Anyone who has stopped, tried to stop commuters in the morning rush knows how difficult it can be. However, Angelina's motivation did not waver. She turned up every morning talking to anyone who would listen, and listen they did. This petition has collected over 20,000 signatures. It also caught the attention of journalists and community advocates and people from across this state who enabled Angelina and this petition to reach a broader audience. I acknowledge and thank Chris O'Keefe, Robert Ovadia, Michael Angelkovic, and many others in bringing this issue to prominence and getting it the attention that it deserves. Because it is clear that not only is change needed, but our community agrees and wants us to change things. Speaker, I was sent to this place by my community to not only celebrate and share the many good things that happen, but also to stand with my community to try and resolve the challenges and the injustices that occur. And that is at the heart of what is being sought by the many people who have signed this petition, those who have joined us in the gallery today, and the many members of this house who would agree with me in saying that we need justice. We need justice for Alina, we need justice for Ernesto, and we need justice for the many, many people whose lives have been irrecoverably changed by tragedy. 
and the actions of others. Thank the member for Liverpool. I call the member for Holsworthy. Thank you, Speaker. I rise in support of the petition received by the House from the member for Liverpool. The petitioners are seeking for the New South Wales Government to consider increasing the maximum penalties for serious road crimes. The alleged offender of the hit and run was charged with aggravated dangerous driving occasioning death, which carries a maximum penalty of imprisonment for 14 years. On the evening of the 1st of September 2024, siblings Alina, age 24, and Ernesto, 15, were tragically killed in a hit and run in Heckenberg, Heckenberg part of the Liverpool LGA. Alina was picking up her younger brother Ernesto from work when the crash occurred 200 metres away from their home. As a former councillor on Liverpool City Council, I had many constituents reach out about the need for speed cameras along our local roads. Simply put, we have had too many deaths, injuries and near misses on our local roads. It is sad that it took the death of two innocent people to spark this discussion. My condolences must go to Angelina Kaufman, who is in the gallery today. You are a brave soul. It wasn't a campaign she wanted, nor one any, nor one any should as someone who has to bear the pain that no parent should ever have to endure. With the support of her community soon after the incident, a candlelit vigil was held which attracted 150 people at the crash scene. With a groundswell of support, Angelina managed to get 20,359 signatures from local residents calling for change. Angelina spent day after day, week after week and month after month speaking to locals and requesting their support. It has culminated in, into today. It has culminated into today in this place where we debate the request. I am aware that the New South Wales Law Reform Commission is currently reviewing serious road offences. On the 10th of November 2022, former Attorney General and current Leader of the Opposition, Mark Speakman, requested a report with the reference of, one, whether the existing provisions of the Crimes Act New South Wales dealing with serious road and dangerous driving offences, in particular Part 3, Division 6 and manslaughter, and accessorial liability provisions remain fit for purpose. Two, whether the maximum sentences available for serious road crimes remain appropriate. Three, relevant sentencing principles in statute and common law for serious road crimes. Four, the experience and rights of victims of serious road crime and their families within the criminal justice system. Five, any other matter the Commission considers relevant. Every single one of us in this place and the other place will eagerly await the tabling of this report in light of today's debate. However, as we await the findings of the Law Reform Commission's report, we must acknowledge the urgency of this matter. The tragedy that befell Alina and Ernesto should serve as a wake-up call for us all. It's not just about statistics or legal technicalities. It's about human lives, families shattered and communities torn apart. Increasing the maximum penalties for serious road crimes is not about vengeance. It's about deterrence and justice. It's about sending a clear message that reckless behaviour on our roads will not be tolerated. We owe it to Angelina, to the memory of Alina and Ernesto, and to every family who has lost a loved one to preventable road accidents to take action. I call on the New South Wales Government to heed the voice of Angelina and the 20,000 plus petition signatories and the rest of the community and listen to their heartfelt pleas. Let us honour the memory of Alina and Ernesto by turning their tragedy, tragedy into meaningful change. Let us stand together and say, enough is enough. Let us make our roads safer for all who use them. I thank the House. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Leppington. Thank you, Speaker. I uh, thank the member for Liverpool for sponsoring this petition. Uh, and as a member of a neighbouring seat, I can say that uh, my community feels a similar sense of grief and loss as hers does. Next Monday will officially mark my 12 months in the job as the member for Leppington. Uh, in those 12 months, I've taken countless meetings, delivered plenty of speeches, uh, gotten on with the job of delivering my, uh, for my community. It's had its ups, uh, many ups and occasional downs, but nothing has been uh, more difficult than the meeting I had with Angelina and Ayana, uh, a mother and sister who had their children and siblings snatched from them. I first met with them in October, uh, not yet two months after the terrible tragedy. Uh, what can you say in that situation? No, no words can comfort, no words can soothe the loss. 
The accident that took Alina and Ernesto is about three or four kilometres from my house. Uh, a short five minute drive and it's a road I've driven down uh, plenty of times myself. I'm a father of two kids, a 16 year old daughter who's learning to drive at the moment uh, and a 14 year old son, uh, both around the same age as Ernesto was. Uh, only this week my wife and I were chatting uh, about how close our kids are and uh, how my daughter Nia like any good big sister, looks out for her little brother, Evan. That's what Alina was doing on that tragic night when she went to pick Ernesto up from his part-time job. As we know, they never came home. For any parent, this is unthinkable and it was also avoid avoidable. This important petition has come about because of the determination of Angelina to ensure no mother, no parent, has to feel the immense grief that she uh, has lived with each and every day since that tragic night. She has worked day and night to get signatures on this important petition. She's been ably assisted by friends and supporters across New South Wales. Uh, among them, uh, Michelle Wilmer and the Domofsky family who are here with us today uh, in the gallery. Uh, thanks to uh, other members of the community have assisted in getting this over the line. Uh, people like Michael Angelkovic, uh, another constituent of mine who has uh, designed flyers and, and mobilised his extensive community networks to get the signatures required. That work was instrumental in getting us to where we are today. Uh, also the media, can I thank uh, in particular Chris O'Keefe and Robert Avadia for covering this story and pushing the petition multiple times on both TV and radio. Thank you to, to each and every one of the 20,000 or so uh, signatories from across New South Wales. They have signed this petition and they recognise the need for change. Finally, uh, I pay tribute to Angelina and Ayana. I am in awe of your continuing strength. Uh, none of this would have been possible without your strength and tenacity. The Law Reform Commission is currently undertaking a review into road crime offences. That review is considering whether the existing serious road crime offences and the law on accessorial liability are fit for purpose, whether the maximum sentences and sentencing principles are appropriate and irrelevant, and most importantly, the experience and rights of victims of serious road crimes and their families in the criminal justice system. The review was announced by the now opposition leader, uh, the member for Cronulla in 2022 in his capacity as Attorney General at the time. Uh, and um, that means that we do have bipartisan support on this issue, which is critically important. Uh, a consultation paper on this uh, issue is currently out for feedback and I do encourage the community to have their say. Angelina has been clear with her feedback. When someone is suspended from driving, commits dangerous driving occasioning death, fails to stop and assist, tries to cover up their involvement and shows little to no remorse. She wants life in jail. She also wants consideration of compulsory defensive driving courses, especially for young drivers and uniform laws across all jurisdictions. I note the parliament is currently considering uh, additional powers in relation to the use of social media in serious road crime. And I thank the attorney general for his work on that. Uh, but there is more to be done. I eagerly await the handing down of this review, as I'm sure many in this chamber and gallery do, and I remain committed to doing everything in my power to prevent tragedies, tragedies like this one uh, ever occurring again. Thank the member for Leppington. I call the member for Davidson. Well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, beautiful souls. That is what Alina and Ernesto are remembered as being, and they are beautiful souls. And with the House's indulgence, um, I wanted to share a photo of them today. Alina was 24 years old and Ernesto 15 years old when they were killed in a road collision in uh, Heckenberg in southwest Sydney. To their mother Angelina and sister Ayanna and family who are here in the gallery, I am just so sorry that you lost Alina and Ernesto. And on behalf of my community, uh, I give my condolences to this loss. The events of the 1st of September 2023, I know, would be a day that you wish had never happened. As members know, this matter is still before the courts, and as a member of parliament, of course, uh, we just need to be mindful of the separation of powers. But we can talk about this very important petition 
And I thank the 20,359 people that did sign this very, very important petition and bring this issue to the attention of this parliament. The petition in particular said that we, the petitioners, request that the New South Wales government consider increasing the maximum penalties for serious road crimes. And as a member of the Joint Standing Committee on Road Safety, I've had the opportunity to meet with the Road Trauma Support Group in New South Wales. And I want to put on record that I thank them for all the work that they do and all the work that they did in adv advocacy around making sure that we actually do review maximum penalties. And before I go into penalties, I just want to say how concerned I am with the current road toll crisis. Uh, as members know, we've got the safest cars happening in the world. We've got the safest roads being built. Uh, we have greater driver education than ever before. But sadly, the to road toll continues to increase. And uh, just reported only today in the Daily Telegraph, uh, the road toll has increased to a crisis point with 100 more deaths in the past 12 months than any year before. And this is something that everyone in this house, everyone in the community, we all need to come together and we need to make sure uh, that we are stopping this on our roads. And most importantly is to make sure that people who should not be on the roads uh, are actually not on the roads. And this now brings me to what the Law Reform Commission is reviewing into serious road crime offences, uh, which is the member for Leppington said started in November of 2022 under the former Attorney General Mark Speakman. Uh, terms of reference were made in relation to that review and uh, can I say a, a very good consultation, consultation paper uh, was released and there are comments out there uh, that are out there until the 5th of April. And I just want to read just some things just from the consultation paper to bring to the attention of the House and attention of the community. Uh, one of the things it talks about is, well, what is a maximum penalty? And that is an offence that is the highest penalty in a court may impose for that offence. And that maximum penalties are actually set out in legislation. And that the parliament can legislate to increase a maximum penalty if there are concerns it is too lenient. Increases in the maximum penalty can reflect changing community standards about the appropriate sentence for that offence. When Parliament increases a maximum penalty, courts generally uh, interpret this to indicate that sentence for that offence should increase in line with the Parliament's intention. Now, there are considerations when reviewing these penalties that the consultation outlines, and the first is that are maximum penalties an effective deterrent? And they should be an effective deterrent because you want to know that people who do the wrong thing will face the full brunt of the law. And the second is, uh, would it have any increase uh, in any untended consequences? Uh, now, the current uh, penalties, uh, the first is manslaughter, which has 25 years imprisonment. The second is aggravated dangerous driving occasioning death is 14 years imprisonment. And dangerous driving occasioning death is 10 years imprisonment. Now, they have compared in this consultation paper, is this in line with what's happening uh, around Australia? I note South Australia has uh, 15 years uh, for a first offence, but life imprisonment for an aggravated or subsequent offence, and that the ACT uh, has a, a maximum penalty of 14 years imprisonment. So I look forward to when this review is going to be completed. Uh, as Member for Leppington said, it does have full bipartisan support. It's fantastic having the Attorney General here today. I know him like I look forward to seeing that discussion paper to make sure that uh, the petition here today is heard loud and clear. Thank the Member for Davidson. I call the Member for Shaw Harbour. Thank you, Speaker. Um, Speaker, I thank Angelina Kaufman as well as the Demosky family that are in the gallery with us today. And I thank the Member for Liverpool and the more than 20,000 people who signed the petition for, and for bringing this matter to the House for debate today. I know how hard it is to get a few thousand signatures for a petition, so I thank Angelina and everyone who signed, uh, which has ensured that this important issue is discussed today. Uh, we will stand in this place in 10 years' time and look back on this petition knowing that it's going to save lives. Uh, speaker, as the Parliamentary Secretary for Roads, assisting the government in all of our efforts to provide a safe road network for all, I take this tragic loss of life personally. It is always heartbreaking time when 
Time and time again, I stand in this house and I discuss petitions involving the loss of innocent lives on our roads. And Speaker, I acknowledge the pain and the suffering of the families and the friends of Alina Kaufman and Ernesto Salazar, age 24 and 15, who were killed on the evening on the 1st of September 2023 in Heckenberg by a disqualified driver. As New South Wales, as a New South Wales MP for 13 years now, I've seen way too much senseless, senseless loss of life on our roads, and cases like this just make my blood boil. Speaker, here we have a person who was allegedly unlicensed and speeding and driving dangerously on the wrong side of the road when he collided with a car in which Alina and Ernesto were travelling. And as a mother myself, this is the worst possible nightmare for any parent. Having your precious children taken away from you in such senseless circumstances. In this case, Alina was simply being a fantastic big sister. Uh, she was picking up her brother from work. They are 100 metres from home. They were doing nothing wrong. They are victims of this senseless crime. And the same for the Domeski family. They've lost their son in a hit and run. Their beautiful son, Bryson, was 14 when it happened. Speaker, we must do everything we can to, de to deter such crimes and make our roads as safe as possible. We must send a message to reckless drivers that there are serious consequences to your actions and a strong signal must be sent to our communities and that we are acting in this way. In this case, having a maximum penalty for concealing the crime and hindering the investigation of 21 years is greater than the maximum sentence of 14 years for the driver. Speaker, a review is clearly required, uh, and I support the petitioners and I understand their frustrations regarding maximum penalties for serious road crimes. And I am also very pleased to acknowledge that the Attorney General is in the chamber with us this afternoon listening to this debate, uh, and also the Parliamentary Secretary to the Attorney General as well. Uh, that sends a strong message. Um, make no mistake, I will do all I can to change our laws through appropriate legislation. We will not stop until these crimes match the time. Um, I think again the member for Liverpool for bringing this important debate to this House today uh, and I look forward to hearing other uh, members speak on this important issue. Thank you. Thank the member for Shell Harbour. I call the member for Castle Hill. Th thank you Mr Temporary Speaker. I rise to speak on an extremely important petition which has been presented today to Parliament. I want to acknowledge today in the gallery the presence of Angelina Kaufman who has petitioned Parliament for harsher penalties for road crimes. I want to extend my deepest sympathy to you and your family for your loss. I also extend my deepest sympathy to every member of the gallery today who has lost a family member. I know there are members of the gallery here today who are here to listen to the petition. When a family member, particularly a child, is lost through tragedy, the loss I know affects every family member. Speaking of my own career before being elected as a member of Castle Hill is that I served as a member of the police force for about 10 years. Subsequently, I was admitted to practice as a solicitor and I worked as a solicitor for over 29 years. And during my time as a solicitor, for about 10 years, I would give up my time, some weekends, some evenings, to provide lectures to traffic offenders as part of the Traffic Offender Intervention Program. The program is directed to changing the behaviour of those who commit traffic offenders. And I've also served on the Law Society Criminal Law Committee. I wanted to speak today on this very, very important petition as I have a real concern that we as a society should do much more to make our roads safer for our road users. Speaker, during the time that I provided lectures to the Traffic Offender Program, I, I often talk to participants about the tragic consequences of traffic offending. I won't go into the facts of the matter which has brought this petition today because I know the matter is before the court. So what I will do is I'll mention one of the horrific cases that I would often talk to traffic offenders as part of the traffic offender program, which I think will help. The case was a case called Kirkovic and it's reported in 2008 New South Wales Law Reports at 1. And I mention the case because I believe discussing the traffic horrific, horrific consequences helps change offenders' behaviour. The facts of that case were a lorry driver was driving on the intersection of Botany Road and McAvoy Street, Waterloo. The intersection was controlled by traffic lights. The driver of the lorry was intending to make a left hand turn into Potney Street. The lights turned green and the driver commenced to make his left turn. A walk sign for pedestrian crossings was also turning green. 
and I'll now read from the facts as indicated by the Chief Magistrate at the time. The Magistrate said, for all intents and purposes, Samustri Pongwashri, who was the mother of a child, was carrying her three-year-old daughter Jessica in her arms as the offender moved off rep rep in the respective green arrow lights. The intending direction of travel by the offender required him to turn left around the corner of the intersection and across the area provided for traffic lights controlled by the pedestrians. It is clear from the offender's plea that he failed to observe either the green pedestrian walk sign had been activated, putting him on notice that pedestrians may be in the immediate vicinity. The offender completed his left hand, left hand turn and, and struck the victims, causing the victims to fall to the ground and for lorry to pass over them. As a result of the impact, Jessica, who was, as I said, was three years of age, was killed. Her mother suffered serious injuries. His Honour said when sentencing the offender, there is no doubt that, effects of, that the effects of Jessica's parents' immediate and extended family have been and will likely remain catastrophic. In a modern society, we are conditioned to believe that in the natural order of life, means that children do not pass from this earth before their parents. When events intervene to disturb that equilibrium, the ability of those directly and indirectly affected to cope with the unanticipated is correspondingly affected. Speaker, there are many cases where criminal offending has caused tragic consequences, and I know yours is tragic, and I again offer my sympathies. As legislators, we must be mindful that maximum penalties are set to achieve a balance of the sentencing principles. Those sentencing principles are various. There is often a desire for members of the press and members of the community to increase penalties when there are tragic consequences arising from criminal offending. As, be, as has been said today, the matter is being looked at by the Law Reform Commission. Submissions may be made by the public up until the 5th of April, and I encourage, like other members, the community to make submissions. I lastly want to say something about education for young drivers. As part of my time giving lectures at the Traffic Offender Program, we used to give lectures in person. That changed during COVID, and as I understand it now, those lectures are now given online. I would always feel that the giving of a lecture in person, particularly talking about the tragic consequences, had a far more salutary effect on drivers, and that was the impression that I gave, that I observed. And I note the attorney is before the court, and I thank the attorney and the parliamentary secretary for your interest in this matter very much. And I would simply say to the attorney and to everyone in this house that we need to do much more to educate young drivers so that we don't have these types of tragic consequences. I again, in closing, want to thank you again for bringing the petition before this house. I know that every member of this house shares with you your loss. And I hope that this house, when we receive the report from the Law Reform Commission, can do something to make sure that loss is not sustained by anyone else. Thank you very much for your petition. I thank the member for Castle Hill. I now call the Attorney General in response. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I begin by thanking the member for Liverpool for bringing this petition to the House. All of the, uh, thank all the members who partook in the debate and uh, all of those who signed the petition to bring it to us and to our attention today. I welcome all the guests. and in the gallery and um, it was lovely to meet them in sad circumstances this afternoon um, and I do join with colleagues in expressing my sincere condolences to your families for the loss of your loved ones, particularly for the loss of Elena and, and, and Ernesto. Um, this tragedy leaves us all with heavy hearts. I've been dealing with road trauma for most of my parliamentary career. Firstly, when I became the Minister for Roads in 2008 then as Minister for Police after that, and again now in, uh, as Attorney General. Um, and it must be our mission to make sure that fewer and fewer people suffer your pain. Our ultimate goal would be, of course, a, a terrific one to make sure that there are no more motor vehicle crashes that bring injury and death and tragedy on our roads. That's our mission and it has to be. Um, we're tempted in, on occasions like this to say that we understand your pain and sorrow. But as a father, I, I don't. I can imagine it, um, and I hope I and others never have to go through what you go through. Um, but I can't say that I understand it, but I do sympathise and imagine the darkness and devastation that's been brought to your families. There are too many people lost behind uh, on our roads, and this year, as one of the earlier members said, the road toll, I think, is about 100 more than it should be at this time of year. Um, the people we lose are not just statistics, they're sons and daughters, mothers, 
fathers, brothers, sisters, husbands, friends, colleagues, and they do leave a massive hole. Um, currently, there are a range of criminal offences that apply in relation to situations where the death of another person is caused by a driver. Um, they range these penalties from 10 years to imprisonment for life. Um, broadly speaking, the offences for murder or manslaughter may apply where the driver of a vehicle causes the death of another person, and these offences are contained in Section 18 of the Crimes Act, the maximum penalty for murder being life imprisonment, the maximum penalty for manslaughter being 25 years imprisonment. But despite these very tough penalties, there are many, many people, such as you, who feel like after the court case has been concluded that justice has not been done. Um, we hear that, I hear that. The government is awaiting the findings of the recommendations of the New South Wales Law Reform Commission and I've met with people like Martha Jabour, St Martha, uh, the Road Trauma Support Group and I have said to them, and I'll say it once again, um, I've promised that I will give that report my most earnest earnest consideration when it comes before me, and I will. And I thank, once again, uh, everyone who uh, was responsible for bringing this important discussion to our House today. Thank the Attorney-General. I now call the member for Liverpool in reply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the speakers on this petition debate, the members for Holsworthy, Leppington, Shell Harbour, Davidson and Castle Hill for their contributions, for their empathy, for uh, sharing the, the pain and the outrage of my community in this place. I acknowledge the and, and thank the Attorney General for his remarks and for his uh, earnestness in recognising the seriousness and important of this, importance of this issue. Um, and I acknowledge that the Ref Law Reform Commission is currently reviewing the system to try and bring some consistency to the senten sentencing regime in relation to serious road crimes. I expect that every member of this House will get behind this petition and keep in mind the burden borne by those who are left behind, the family members and loved ones of the innocent victims of serious road crimes and their right to justice as all stakeholders work together to prevent further increase of needless loss of lives on our roads. I place on the record my hope that the advocacy of the Kaufman family goes towards preserving the legacy of Elena and Ernesto, that any law change that improves our community and our society be named in their honour. They may have had the chance to do the things we often take for granted stolen, but the lives they have touched and the impact that they have already made since then uh, is extraordinary. And I extend my deepest condolences and thanks to the Demovsky family and all those who are in the gallery who care so deeply about this issue and who have made it their mission to ensure that change is enacted and that we experience justice in all facets of our system. Thank you. The question is that the House take note of the petition. All of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it.